Hi, welcome to the Los Libos Wine Merchant and Cafe, where you not only get to taste California's Central Coast wines, but you also get to meet the winemakers. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you to James Sparks and Jeff Nelson of Liquid Farm. So welcome. Thank you. It's Thank a you. pleasure to have both the uh, influencers for these beautiful wines here at the table. Pleasure to be um, here. Thank you for having us. It's yeah. an honor to be yeah. here. Yeah. You're, yeah, and I guess this is our uh, in, kind of like a anniversary for you guys, 10 years, and we were your, one of your first places to have a winemaker dinner, right? You were, and actually one of our first places to be by the glass, and so to be in such a uh, popular and... Uh, Speaking of by the glass, yes, as you're saying yes. that, I'm going to pour <laughs> your uh, your liquid farm or should we SPC. pour you? Should we? Um, no, um, no, my right. treat. My treat. Let me pour your, you're in my establishment. Okay. Let me pour your wine Thank for you. you. But go ahead. Uh, but yeah, we're honored to be here. We, uh, uh, like I said, uh, started in 2009. Uh, we were by the glass here in 2010. So that's a huge honor to be by the glass in a, such a uh, prestige wine area um, where everybody would see the name uh, Liquid Farm. So it was a uh, big boost to our uh, branding from the very beginning. Oh, so we, we appreciate that. Supporting local winemakers, it's our thing and part of why we do our featured winemaker series. Uh, love getting to know, you know people behind the wine and we have such an exciting community of winemakers to pull from. So it's been our pleasure and watching you guys grow and succeed. I know when you started off, uh, well, first, cheers, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to 10 years. Cheers. Ten cheers. 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 And when you started off, you said, we're going to make Chardonnay, and we're drinking a Pinot. So tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> Lots of nevers yeah. uh, in the mm. project. And Chardonnay was really what we wanted to uh, be known for, um, especially because this area is so... Oh, that is so good. Yeah. And we started this in 2014, so... Um, I could drink that for breakfast. Yes. That alcohol, is beautiful. Uh, alcohols are very uh, light, it, very yes. balanced. Light, juicy, flavorful, long Elegant. lasting, yep. beautiful. Very it Burgundian matches. in style is what we're obviously <laughs> trying to go for. So yes. with food um, and by itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, uh, uh, 14 was the first vintage for, for Pinot. Yes. Uh, but Chardonnay is what we're known for, as I kind of mentioned before. It's, beautiful Chardonnay. Thank you. So we ate local. Uh, Fruit fly. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sorry. One down. <laughs> One down of about a thousand. I do not like those things. <laughs> he randomly claps. So. <laughs> it's just what I do. <laughs> yes, we're in the winery doing that. It's like that the Saturday Night Live skin with right. the bubbles. Right. <laughs> Never mind. Tiny, tiny bubbles. Uh, we're doing that. So fruit flies are something we do not like in the winery. No. So uh, James uh, is our winemaker who is very proficient at keeping everything very clean, um, <laughs> which is a huge, a huge duty for winemaking is uh, cleanliness, cleanliness. So, and fruit flies. Yes, it's part of the game. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to ask you each um, this question that I like to ask all of our featured winemakers. If you can sum up an aspect of your personality in one word that influences your wine, you, James, as the winemaker, what would that be? And Jeff, you knowing James as the winemaker and knowing having a different perspective um, than him looking at himself, how, what's that one word of an aspect of his personality that gets infused to, into these liquid farm wines? In one word? Ideally. Okay, it, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm flexible. <laughs> All right, well, that's a great question. Um, Huh. I've got the answer. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we play a lot of ping pong, so I'm going to uh -huh. say competitive. <laughs> I'm uh, going to say soft. Soft. <laughs> and I, think, I see the P I see the winning hit right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I think I think balanced and um, um, I guess I would say slight is the right word, but no. I think um, I think a lot of winemakers make wines that almost. Uh, uh, reflect them, themselves. So if you have some bigger 
winemakers. <laughs> you might have bigger you wines. Can, you tend to <laughs> have. They're not very big. Right. So we so tend we're to very be on those, slight. You know, more delicate side. <laughs> so I'm going to go delicate. We're sensitive. Yeah. Delicate, so you're saying delicate. And balanced. Okay. And balanced, yes. <laughs> There's many other. You could be a ballerina, you could be a tightrope. Oh, yeah. Like ping pong player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll go with ping pong. I don't think I could do ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> and how about for you? Ah, uh, boy. Yeah, I think I think I would go with just like um, oh, I had the word. What did I say? Um, competitive. No, uh, oh, yeah, that it wasn't it. Uh, I think it was um, soft. Soft. Yeah, but it, I wouldn't even say soft. It's just I like the word balanced, but I think uh, slight because we are both not big, but we do tend to like that style of wine mm -hmm. that's a little bit more delicate, mm -hmm. a little bit more nuances that you mm -hmm. may not get from a bigger wine. Mm -hmm. um, a more layers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the so. wine versus just a lot of fruit and a lot of Ooh, oil. layers is a good one because we're both pretty layered. Right layers now. is good. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll, I'll go with layers. Okay. All right. Especially with this layers weather. Layers it is. Yeah. The yeah. weather lately, we've been so, layered. Yes. Yeah, and and that, that um, you know, the layers, that the nuances that you each bring into it. You make the wine. What do you do? Uh, well, <laughs> not much. <laughs> if it wasn't for Jeff, we would not be in business. That's, that's <laughs> and important. so, Glad moving the wine, making sure that we're getting our bills paid, making sure that everything is moving. I mean, Jeff is running the company, mm -hmm. uh, so it allows me to have that freedom. And mm -hmm. then we get to... You have, have you, 10 do, years? Have you guys ever had like a conflict of saying, I do not like this? What did you do here? What were your choices? Or... No, I, no, we pretty much, uh, there's certain things that we don't like, but it's usually the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're both like, eh, I think we can do better. So we'll go back to the drawing board. Because, again, Liquid Farm and is you, all about... if you about, didn't, then you could just fight it off in ping pong. Exactly. Right? We could, but then I would win all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks. He wants to stop playing me because he's up about 10 games for the year. And the year is almost over. I, I'm making a comeback. Okay. Yeah, so. but I switched well, battles. It sounds like the you know all their wines are going to be fun as well because... Sounds like you guys have a good time I, I think in the so. relationship and making wines and selling wines. You can't make wine if you can't sell it. That is very And this true. is definitely a very marketable wine. Well, and I um, think, too, one of the things I wanted to say, too, with Liquid Farm is it is about blending. And I think that was one of the benefit, not benefits, but one of the, the smart layers, things yeah. that Jeff started at very early on. Because it wasn't about, like, single vineyard. It's about, like, grabbing the best vineyards from the valley mm -hmm. to create the best wine possible from Pinot to Chardonnay mm -hmm. to Rosé of Mervet. Mm -hmm. It's it's all about that blending, and so. And I love that when I looked at your website and you had a little synopsis on each of the places where you get your wine, and I um, mean, my first impression too before you know, meeting both of you together like this was that you both genuinely love this area. Oh yes. Have a passion for bringing out all the flavors and all the 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 complexity of the different vineyard sites and I was amazed at all these top vineyard sites that you guys landed on like who you you guys have some good connections so well, tell us a little bit about that and how that affects your Chardonnay and um, your rosés and your Pinot and you know your whole profile for the yeah, farm. Thank you we're, we're honored to be working with some of the great producers in the area you know how I started the project was we ate local in Los Angeles but didn't drink local California wines. So that was really the, the catalyst for the project was I was working in, in the champagne and burgundy business for many years um, on the sales side, um, ambassador type side, regional manager side, um, and again, drank mostly European wines. So the goal was to try to produce something a little more Burgundian mm -hmm. in the area. Um, my idea was not to do a single vineyard necessarily uh, because I felt that a single vineyard could be a little one dimensional but actually to balance um, the different vineyards that we get and really listen to the barrels mm -hmm. in, in, of the project. And that's how it started. We started with the Kessler Hawk Vineyard in 2009, four barrels. Two barrels kind of went on their own, more Chablis-like. The other two went a little more Merceau. So instead of bottling all four together, we decided to do two and two, which is only 48 cases of each. So Golden Slope is for the love of the Cote d'Or of Burgundy. Uh, reminding me more Merceau in that vintage in 09. So that's a proprietary name called Golden Slope. White Hill, which is not on the table, um, was a proprietary I'm name. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> the, I know there's a few, I got a few over here. I know, I'm trying not this to be the, so the aggressive. Wine is, the wine yeah, is we're gonna a, knock the wine over. 
It's not the, yeah, like it's... They love it's, the wine. It's good, they do. Yeah. But it all came down to a barrel uh, selection and then the style that reminded me of Burgundy. Mm -hmm. And so we were lucky enough to keep that going forward. With James and the winery, we did different things, whether we had a little bit of new oak here, a little stainless steel on the White Hill, um, in order to um, keep that profile going year in and year out. So the wines obviously will have vintage variation, but they'll have the separation together of one little more Chablis, mm -hmm. a little more Merceau. Fun question. I'm very curious, um, after we chatted a little bit before the interview, um, what did you want to be when you grow up? When you, grew, when you were a kid, let's say like 10, 12 years old, I know where you both are now, and I know a little bit in between, but this is never a straight path for anybody, and I love hearing people's stories. Yeah. What did you want to be? Uh, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? I, uh, I didn't, probably a, a detective. Was <laughs> That's a good one. That's I, a good one. I was uh, thinking law enforcement at one point. That's um, awesome. I got in the wine business right out of college in 1990, and I got, st not stuck in it, but I, I, I started in it. And after a few years, I started working for um, Vouve Clicquot in the mid-90s and got the bug. And before I knew it, I was in the wine business and always thought I would do something entrepreneurial in the wine, uh, outside of the wine business, but realized over time what your career is, mm -hmm. it's where you are. And mm -hmm. so um, I was lucky enough with um, James's brother-in-law, Brandon Sparks-Gillis from Dragon and Cellars, to start the project. So for me, I guess I've been doing what I've been doing all my career, and now I'm uh, at the level of, of having a team and all of us kind of being part of Liquid Farm, so that's, I'm very happy to be where I'm at now. Nice. I, well, I grew up in Idaho, so I think for me it was oceanography. Like, I always loved the ocean and the sea life, mm -hmm. or ocean life, mm -hmm. uh, and then <laughs> life comes into play, and I you know, did many things and just sort of fell into wine um, in a very older, and it, I was much older when I fell into it, but when I did, it was just like, wow, this is what I enjoy. I can be creative, I can be mm -hmm. clean, I yeah. can be uh, in well, the and vineyards. It's, and it's science. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you are dealing with... A lot of variables so, yeah. and a lot of yeah. things that can go wrong and can go right, and uh, you have, um, you know, from liquid from farming you've got the farming aspect you've got the the uh, the liquid aspect it's all there it's a mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing and so I, I love the name liquid farm it's just it's yeah. classic it is what it is that guy yeah. he's good with names. <laughs> good with names we got lucky with that but it's 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 not about anybody's last name or ego project mm -hmm. it's really liquid from farming mm -hmm. kind of going back to the initial conversation about the vineyards we work with you know, we're honored to be working with them, so that's why we try to promote them as much as we can. Yeah. Um, and James is a magic man in the vineyards as far as knowing when to pick. Um, we, we try not to use science too much, but it's mostly palate, and I think science kind of backs up what mm -hmm. we do, and mm -hmm. I think that's what kind of makes us a little bit different in, in some ways, that we don't use uh, classically trained um, science to control the wine. We actually try to go through, listen to the barrels, kind of mm -hmm. how project started with four barrels, two went one way, two went the other, nothing was done differently in the winery. Um, and we still do that, so we don't, uh, we take the extra steps, uh, especially James now, in tasting every barrel and seeing where they're going. So mm -hmm. we treat each barrel almost as an individual person, mm -hmm. and we yeah. treat the, the vineyard as the surname. So uh, each barrel has an opportunity to get in almost uh, all three of the bottles we produce. So it's, a, it's an interesting way of looking at it. I don't think anybody else in the area has done what we've done um, in some ways, and it's more kind of back in my champagne days of blending, blending for a style, which we did make a champagne in France, actually, Le Menil, mm -hmm. uh, which will be brought over next year. Oh, which, fun. Yeah, Liquid Farm fun Champagne. Oh, yeah, fun. Yeah. So we look be, forward to selling that. Yeah, it'll be great. Stay tuned. So, <laughs> all Chardonnay. good things, all Chardonnay. Well, thank you so much for, it's been a pleasure hosting you guys and um, look forward to seeing all your new things to come in the next 10 years yeah, and yes. congratulations well, thank on you thank you, you know, cheers. Wonderful thank you for yeah. helping us get our start we yes really thank, you. thank you thank you cheers cheers, cheers. cheers.